What's up, everybody? It's Justin. Welcome to Live Ask Me Anything number 58. I'm starting to look homeless. I'm starting to look like Tom, I almost said Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks in Castaway. It's ridiculous. This is the longest my hair has been in a super long time, but there's no way that I'm walking into a barbershop or something in Chiang Mai. I'm not going to do it. I don't trust it. I only trust one particular person to cut my hair because I've been getting haircuts for a long time and they've always sucked until I found this one person who's amazing. So I'm not risking it. Just not going to do it. What's up, everybody? Good morning. I know that's weird to you, but it's morning to me and I love, love, love doing these in the morning. I've actually thought about it in my head. I'm like, maybe, maybe I need to change this up, but I'm not going to because I know that it's easier for you guys at night with work and jobs and stuff and all the stuff that people do, normal people stuff, you know? What's up, Cameron? What's up, Heather? What's up, Ashley? What's up, Caitlin? What's up, Lovely? What's up, Shannon? What's up, Kevin? What's up, Judy? So many people. This is awesome. Ashley's here. Jackie's here. What's up, Jackie? Sally, Jessica, Sally. I think it's your first one, right? Is it your first one? Your first live Ask Me Anything? This is AMA number 58. 58 weeks in. That's crazy. Um, I got to check something real quick because I'm, uh, sorry, I'm spiking this microphone. Check. Hey, one, two, guys, I'm really loud. Uh, okay, for the podcast, I might be loud. But anyway, what's up? So here's what I did. Um, last week, we did a free-for-all. So while I'm in Thailand, it's really hard for me to plan and prep like the big full-blown episodes that you guys are, are used to, like with the whiteboard and everything. Obviously, I don't have a whiteboard here, um, which makes it really difficult. I'm not going to buy a whiteboard just for this. There's a couple of workspaces and stuff that I've found that have whiteboards. Um, I met with this guy, Mark Ritchie, who owns... Um, CrossFit Chiang Mai, which is really cool. So I went and visited CrossFit Chiang Mai. He's got some cool working spaces. But again, the other thing is, since we're doing it in the morning here, a lot of places aren't open that could give me access to a, you know, to a, a, a whiteboard or whatever at this time of day, which is kind of sucky. But anyway, so we don't need the whiteboard. We're just going to take this one super casual. Also, if you didn't see this, if you're not in the Facebook groups, go to facebook.com slash Clovis Academy. Uh, sorry, facebook.com slash groups slash Clovis Academy. Join the Clovis Academy. I just put this up. I put a new feature. Um, let me see if I have it copy and pasted here. I can get it for you guys. It's super easy. So if you go to ama.iamclovis.com. So I made this for you guys as a way to ask questions because I wasn't sure if some people are apprehensive about asking questions because on the Facebook Live, obviously your name is there. You're on your Facebook account. Your name's there. People can click your profile. They can check you out. You know that this is going to go live, that this is going to be in the podcast, all those things. So people might be apprehensive. So I'm going to paste this link right here. You guys can actually ask questions with that link during this live if you want to because um, it goes directly to my email inbox. So I made this particular page on the website just so people can ask questions. You can remain completely anonymous. I don't ask you for an email. I don't ask you for a name. Nothing. You can type this in yourself and say ama.iamclovis.com. Just type in ama.iamclovis.com. Bookmark the page anytime you want to ask a question. You just go to that page, ask it. You can remain anonymous, okay? Uh, Sean, looking kind of thin, my friend. Someone please say that to me someday. Yes, um, well, I'm going to fix that. So I've been talking to uh, a place back home, um, this Hermitage Fitness Center. So what I think I'm going to do is a lot of people have contacted me about gaining muscle. Um, you guys saw Stephen uh, Poirier posted that I put six, pound, six or seven pounds of muscle on him in three weeks. Um, I'm very good at putting muscle on people, so I'm going to put muscle back on myself. That's what I'm going to do so that this looks more impressive than it does right now, okay? So when I'm, whenever I get home, um, I'm going to go to this particular fitness center that has the equipment that I need to do a full mass gains protocol. Um, I'm not going to do it with the ARX machines. You guys have probably seen videos of me doing the crazy ARX machines. ARX is it's simply too expensive for most people, and most cities don't have it. So why would I do a mass gains protocol with equipment that most people don't have access to, right? I'm just not going to do that. So I want this to be accessible to everybody. So I'm just going to do it on machines, machines that are available in most gyms, right? Um, so I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to take my body composition and all those things, see how much muscle I can put on myself in 30 days uh, whenever I decide to go home. And I'm going to see if I can just take advantage of the really low body fat that I have right now and a little bit of weight that I lost and pack on some muscles and then help other people do that. So we'll do a little bit of biohacking experimentation when I get back. 
Can we still ask here? Sean, yeah, absolutely, 100%. The only reason that I did the Ask Me Anything is because let's say it's Thursday night and you're like, hey, uh, this is a good question for Justin. My husband just asked me something at dinner. You can just go to that bookmark page and ask me the question. It'll go to my inbox. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to siphon all of those um, emails in my inbox so I have it set up as a contact. So what will happen is my, my inbox goes off and it literally says the sender. It says, ask me anything question, or I think I have an AMA question, right? So I can just filter and I have a filter set up in my email where I can filter those AMA questions directly to an Evernote notebook because I'm an organization nerd, right? So I'm just going to have those emails filtered directly into an Evernote notebook that shows me AMA questions and I can just answer them week over week if I don't have a big topic that I'm going to jump into or whatever. So it's just an easy way for me to just keep track of questions. You guys can ask questions at all times. So you don't have to keep it. A lot of people get to you here on the live, on the live videos and you know, it's, nighttime or wherever you like yeah Jackie just said I'm 16 hours ahead I'm 13 hours ahead of Nashville time 16 hours because Jackie's in Alaska so the thing is it, sometimes it might be you know 8 p.m. where you are or or a little bit earlier a little bit later depending on your time zone maybe you're drinking a glass of wine you had worked all day whatever and you just can't remember what the hell you wanted to ask me so you're just sitting here watching like I don't have any questions for Justin right now. Like, I totally get it, right? And here I am, Mr. Piss and Vinegar, energetic in your face, right? And you're like, whoa, dude, too much. This is crazy. Um, but so sometimes people can't think of questions. So if at any given time, you just go to ama.iamclovis.com, ask me a question. And if it's a good question, I will answer it. Now, I put this up a little less than an hour ago, I believe, because, sorry, I wasn't getting up at 5 a.m. to make this thing. <laughs> right. So um, I put the, the post up just a little while ago and uh, I really only got one question submission through it for this one, which I'm going to answer here in a second. Um, just want to tell you guys how that works. You can go to it at any given time. You can bookmark it and ask me questions. OK. And you can still ask here. So if anybody has any questions, jump in, ask them right now. You can literally ask me anything. That's the point of this. Ask me anything. And I named this one Ask Me Anything because I named the last one Free For All. And I was like, maybe I'll do free for all part two or free for all Thailand or free for all, blah, whatever, you know, um, that's not really helpful for those particular episodes because when I label an episode like blood pressure, salt and sex, you're like, oh, I know what that's about or back to basics, fat loss. I know what that's about, right? Obviously. So um, I kind of want people to have an idea of what the AMA is. So free for all doesn't really do that. So um, I'm probably going to name this one after the fact and just figure out. Uh, what we talk about, whatever we end up talking about, and then I'll throw that in the title so it's a little bit easier for search and stuff like that. Um, what's up? Laura's here. JP's here. Eric is here. Lance is here. What's up, dude? Shan is here. Mike's here. All right, cool. So let's jump into this particular question that I got. So I'm just going to read this one to you because it was a good one and it's a really good question. So it says, let me see here. One of the AMAs, you discussed how lavender is being used in excess. It was a comment in passing, so just wanted to hear it more expand, expounded. So anyway, yeah, I just read that thing directly, right? Uh, thank you. So basically what they're saying is there was an AMA where I talked about lavender and the potential health problems that come along with lavender. And this person wants me to expand upon this. Now, this was an anonymous question, so awesome. Great. The form works perfectly. Went to my email. It's in Evernote. I'm looking at it in Evernote right now. This is wonderful. It's question number one, success, right? So... Here's the thing. I've talked about this book before. It's called Estrogeneration by a doctor named Dr. Anthony J. Now, I'm probably going to get Dr. Anthony J on the podcast. Um, it's been really tricky to schedule podcasts. As you guys know, um, I have my phone out here because I have to have the cell phone service on so I can monitor Facebook Live. I can't put two devices on the same Wi-Fi at the same time because it's just not as strong here as it is at home. So I have to monitor these things with Facebook and I simply do not trust getting on a Zoom conference or a Skype conference with somebody like Dr. Anthony J to interview him on my podcast and have my signal go out. I'm not gonna risk it. I really thought that I could record podcast interviews from Chiang Mai. I just don't trust it. I'm, I'm not gonna do it from Thailand. So whenever I get back, um, I'm gonna schedule, uh, I have, I'm gonna get Dr. Anthony J on, a bunch of people I want on. I'm gonna get uh, uh, Will and Susan from Aura Wellness. We'll do a dental health AMA. Um, I wanna get the guys from Keto Gains on here. Um, I'm gonna get the guy, uh, he was on Optimized Paleo Podcast. I've just talked to him about the Extrema cookware, the ceramic cookware. Um, we're gonna get him on and talk about the dangers of cooking with non-stick skillets and even cast iron. They're like I've had problems with too much iron. So um, 
me cooking in cast iron all the time might not be the best idea because you it can leach iron into your food. For some women, that might be a friggin' good thing, like supplementing iron. A lot of you are low on iron, right? Not me. I need, I'm need. i supposed to actually donate blood because I have so much iron. But anyway, we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about lavender. The question is about la lavender. So Dr. Anthony J has this book called Estrogeneration. Um, I did an episode called Everything in Your House is Killing You. Um, and I think the other one was hormones finding the balance. I'll take a look. As you guys know, I do comprehensive show notes after this. Um, and I'll, I'll put links to all these AMAs, but I talk about hormones, particularly estrogen. Now there are these estrogenic compounds that are found in tons of stuff. Ben Greenfield was just on Joe Rogan's podcast and talked about this. So now I'm getting a lot more questions about this because anything that hits Joe Rogan comes to me, the anti-aging guy, which was a little bit ridiculous. You get this anti-aging expert uh, named David Sinclair talking about how to live forever and the guy knows nothing about nutrition, which is crazy. It's just like doctors, guys. Like they're still experts. David Sinclair is brilliant. He's an, a gene, an absolute genius, an expert of longevity and anti-aging. Knows nothing about nutrition. If you want to live a long time, why would you learn nothing about nutrition? So anyway, but the Joe Rogan podcast ends up bringing questions to me. So uh, Ben Greenfield mentioned estrogeneration. He mentioned Anthony J. talked about like shaving creams and shampoos and deodorants and all these things. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of going toxin free in your house. I don't have any toxic chemicals in my home. Dr. Bronner's is my soap. I don't wear deodorant most of the time. Even in Chiang Mai, I don't wear deodorant where it's freaking 90 degrees, right? I don't need to. Every girl that I've ever dated in my life at some point, because I love working out, at some point goes, I just don't get it. You can do a full blown workout and be covered in sweat and you never smell. How is that? Well, because my skin biome is very healthy. You have a biome on your skin, just like you have a biome in your stomach. Okay, so anyway, uh, talking about these different things, uh, deodorants, things like that. So personal care products can be really, really problematic because they have these compounds in them called estrogenics. Estrogenics, there's also, they call them phytoestrogens, right? Like the one of the most well-known phytoestrogen containing plants out there is soy. Soy has a ton of this estrogen mimicking compound. Anything that's an estrogenic mimics estrogen in the body. As you guys know, that's a hormone, particularly women. You're going to be familiar with estrogen, right? So what happens, these beauty, beauty products, soaps, plastics, stuff that you cook in, foods like soy, again, they're impacting people's hormones in a significant way because they're loaded with these estrogenic compounds that mimic estrogen in the body. Um, so the particular ones in soy being isoflavones, there's lignins, which are found in flaxseed, but lignins can be broken down by your gut bacteria. Again, we get back to gut bacteria. So lignins are a type of phytoestrogen that humans can just digest and it's pretty harmless. Isoflavones, which are found in soy, not the case. They're very, very, very damaging. They mimic estrogen. So the thing about these lavender compounds is, let's say you were just going to like smell lavender in nature or something, right? Probably not a big deal. The issue comes in when we're putting these products on our skins, particularly a lot of soaps and lotions that contain lavender. Your skin is the biggest organ on your body. Uh, actually, technically that's not true because your fat cells are technically organs because they release a hormone called leptin. So your fat tissue, your adipose tissue is actually part of the endocrine system. So technically when people say your skin is your biggest organ, they're lying to you, particularly if you're obese and have a lot of adipose tissue, stored body fat, your adipose tissue is technically your biggest organ. I just went off on a rant. This is what happens when I don't have notes. Welcome to another free for all, everybody. So these lavender products, they contain these estrogenics and they may be in small amounts. The problem is when man comes in and concentrates them. So your skin can absorb things that you put on it like inside of 20 seconds. It acts like a second stomach. It literally just digests these things that you put on it. So you're digesting a high concentration of lavender. If you have a soap or a lotion that's meant to smell like lavender, people use uh, lavender products to go to sleep at night, they'll put them on their face, all these things, right? They're getting these estrogenic compounds in their system. Now, there's not a ton of data on lavender, okay? So I wanna be clear about that, but there are at least 10 clinical studies on the estrogenic uh, pr properties of lavender. And Dr. Anthony J cites this directly in his book. So I was glad I got this question a little while ago because I'm able to actually pull this quote directly from the book, Estrogeneration. If you have not read Estrogeneration, blah, Estrogeneration, get it to the top of your book list right now. It's freaking terrifying. I'm not going to lie to you. It's terrifying, but it's very important. Okay. So we're, they're analyzing the results of these studies, these 10 studies based on lavender and estrogenics. Okay. And it says, quote, directly from the book, lavender has already given rise to many cases of prepubertal gynecomastia. Okay. Now 
gynecomastia is man boobs. It's literally what it is. It's the technical medical term for man boobs. This is Bob from Fight Club. Bob has bitch tits. Remember? <laughs> or the episode where I said, enjoy your man boobs, Richard, right? These are all these estrogenic compounds. So again, let me finish this quote. Lavender has already given rise to many cases of prepubertal gynecomastia from chronic exposure in personal care products. Multiple studies have shown this. This is directly from the book, Phyto uh, Estrogeneration. So go pick up Estrogeneration by Anthony J. Um, again, these are man boobs. Nobody wants man boobs. But the other thing is, you, what you have to remember, this is not just adults. Think about developing children. This is really the problem that I have with it. So there's this kind of epidemic in America right now of early puberty, early onset puberty in kids. Now, estrogeneration, when you start reading about this early onset puberty stuff, it'll scare the crap out of you. Why? Because here's the medical community's answer. The medical community has nothing to tell the parents. Uh, your daughter went through puberty and got her period at eight years old. Uh, we don't know what happened. Oh my God, right? Now, usually these little kids are obese. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard stories like that. You'll see an obese girl who's, you know, five feet tall and 200 pounds and gets her, becomes a woman at eight years old, seven years old, right? It's crazy. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's all these hormone imbalances. So the medical community has decided they're really thinking about this. I kid you not. I've talked about this before in bad science and things like that. The values that we have for blood work and hormone panels and all these things, they're taken from sick populations. Who goes to get blood work? People that are sick or optimizers like me, but I am definitely the exception. Most of the people getting blood work done are sick. And that's where we get our values from. So the normal blood glucose range is not normal. It's sick. The normal hormone levels are probably low, not high, or high, not low, depending on the problems that are arising, right? So we have this prepuberty thing, and the doctors are trying to decide right now for the future of America if the answer here is to simply lower the normal age of puberty or expand the age of the lowest age and highest age, expand the range for normal puberty. We don't have an answer for these parents. We don't know why their kids are going through early onset puberty. Let's just expand the number and call it normal. Are you kidding me? Can somebody headbutt you in the bridge of your nose and then double leg takedown, triangle choke you until you go to sleep? Because that's stupid and you're a dummy and you shouldn't give anybody any information about health ever again, you son of a bitch, right? That's ridiculous. So anyway, this is really what they're thinking about, lowering the age of normal puberty just to deal with this problem that they don't have an answer for. It's absurd, right? So that's my biggest problem with these estrogens, these estrogenics, phytoestrogens, all those things, is they impact children in a significant way. It's really, really sad, really sad. Now, the biggest issue with lavender to think about is like we talked about, putting it on the skin. But the real big issue here is, and again, I'm a fan of essential oils for certain things, right? I think that essential oils can be great. I think they're probably a little bit overhyped in most scenarios, but I do think that they can be great and the brand matters and all these things, right? But people diffuse lavender all the time. Now, what you're doing is taking a huge concentration of lavender, a big dose of lavender, concentrating it, and then inhaling it, right? It's pretty crazy. You're going to get a, const a, a very, very concentrated dose of these estrogenic compounds. I'm sorry, I'm moving my browser around because I don't need the notes anymore because those are the only notes I have. It's the only question I got submitted today, right? So uh, just really, really think about that, you guys. If you're diffusing these lavenders and stuff, if you have lavender soaps and lavender lotions and Lavender helps you sleep, so you're putting it on your face and you have a diffuser running while you're sleeping. You're getting a lot of estrogen in your system, okay? A lot of estrogen. That's going to cause problems. We know that hormones run the show. You don't want to be mega dosing a hormone. For me, 10 studies is enough. I'm sorry. The, the mainstream medical system, as we know, is 17 years behind current data. I don't wait for the mainstream to catch up. I don't need 100 studies telling me that lavender could potentially be an estrogen-containing compound. Not interested. I can live without lavender. Not a big deal, right? All right, let's look at some comments. It's day 10, and my fiance told me he's noticing a difference in my physique, and he's totally getting intrigued, and he's been asking me things. That is awesome. It's the best way to do this. Lead by example, right? Lead by example. Live a healthy life. Lovely, you are brand new to this. You're going to crush it. You are crushing it. It's going to be fantastic. You're going to be another success story, and you're going to get all the people that you love on board, and that's fantastic, right? What's up, Laura? What's up, Lance? Estrogen generation book, estro generation, all one word. Let me type it in for you. Estro generation. Actually, um, I love having my computer here. Let me open this program. 
open paste bot, which is the coolest program ever that keeps all my stuff lined up for me. Extra, I can grab you guys a direct link and you can get this book. Extra generation. Okay, boom. There we go. Let me paste it in the comments. Go get Extra Generation on Amazon. It's amazing, okay? Uh, love that book. Yes, I would love to hear that podcast. The podcast will definitely happen, okay? Don't worry. Yes, uh, hurry, come home. I know, I know, I know I need to. Um, meeting Mark was amazing. Um, this guy, Mark Ritchie, he runs a sustainable farm, and he does a whole education system around sustainability. Um, I'm going to end up back in Chiang Mai even after I leave. Um, so I already know that, um, that at some point I'm going to end up back here. I would like to bring my family here, actually. It'd be really, really cool. Uh, what else we got? How can some people eat fruit, sugar, soda, grains, and are not overweight? Is their body not creating fat, fat with fructose? No, that's not the case at all. So when we talk about people who are skinny fat, right? I need you guys to understand this. There's a lot going on right now that I'm going to touch on because a lot of clients have been talking to me behind the scenes. Skinny does not mean healthy. Overweight does not mean you're going to die soon. It's really strange. You can have overweight people who are somewhat metabolically healthy or don't have type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance. You can have skinny people who have six-pack abs and are insulin resistant, or they have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, right? So you're talking about fruit, sugar, soda, grains, all these things that in particular, namely the fructose, um, the high fructose corn syrup found in sodas and things like that, these might not directly cause obesity. They will directly cause non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This is a person who could literally die. Their disease, they can have a diseased liver and die with six-pack abs. That can absolutely happen. So genetics do play a role in these things. Your outward appearance very much. I'm going to tell you guys a story right now. One of the main reasons why Clovis exists is I worked out for 10 years straight busted my ass from age 15 to age 25, hooked on ephedrine, caffeine pills. I took legal supplements. I took illegal supplements. I worked out two hours a day. I was a boxer in Boston. I got surgery on my nose. I got surgery on my shoulders. I power lifted. I did CrossFit. I did everything on the sun, all the P90Xs, all the insanity, everything. Eating out of Tupperware containers, farm-raised tilapia, and brown rice and broccoli five times a day, right? And I started dating this girl who could literally eat Sonic and sweet potato tots and nonsense all day long and have sick pack abs and never work out. And I was like, this isn't fair. And that's when I started really analyzing paleo. And around that same time, my niece Savannah was born disabled. So it's just, it's interesting how the universe all works, but you need to keep in mind that outward appearance doesn't tell us a whole lot, right? A hundred million people are pre-diabetic and diabetic. A full 88% of those people don't know it. They don't know it. There's plenty of skinny diabetics out there. So this is the problem that I have. I have another AMA. Um, you should absolutely watch this, Alyssa. I have an AMA called How Weight Loss Ruined Everything. And this is my problem that's coming up with clients in Clovis. They're moving too quickly. They're moving way too quickly. So what happens is people jump into Clovis. They lose 11 pounds in a week, 30 pounds in a month. 40 pounds in two months. The, the, one of my clients on there on the transformation page, 50 pounds in eight weeks, right? Some people get on, they lose 30 pounds in three months, right? So 10 pounds a month or whatever. Some people lose 20 pounds in three months. It's different for everybody. Some people, I have to unlock the fat loss, right? Like Cassie lets me talk about this openly. I was with Cassie for months, couldn't get her to lose a pound, right? We finally figured out that she was freaking poisoned on a cellular level from glyphosate, which is Roundup. And we had to do extended fasting, extended, prolonged, I'm talking seven, 10 days of fasting, using things like bone broth, detoxing the cells, getting things like autophagy to happen, right? Weight loss is different for everybody. And it depends on how fucked your system is, right? Because all of your systems are fucked by the time you get to me, right? So you have to understand that and you have to think long-term because here's what happens. People come to me and I say, stop working out. We need to fix your metabolism first, especially all the CrossFitters and crazy people, right? So they they listen to me, they stop working out, they lose a ton of weight, their inflammation goes down, everything's working better, they're sleeping better, they're having better sex, everything's better because they're not crushing their testosterone levels or their libido with overtraining and all these things, right? So people get healthier and healthier. Next thing you know, they're six months into Clovis, they're at their goal weight, they have abs without working out, and they're like, hey, I want to get back in the gym. And I'm like, cool, get back in the gym. Then all of a sudden, I see him on Instagram. You know, up at four o'clock in the morning in the gym, five days a week, hitting a wad. And then I just wait. I go like this. Oh, you're working out six days a week again. You think you're ready. You think you fixed your entire body, all the metabolic problems that you had. You think you fixed it in six months. You think you're a Clovis expert. You think you're Justin now, right? I've been working at this health thing for 17 years. I've been doing 
Clovis style and biohacking, I've easily spent 50 grand. I'm not even kidding on functional medicine and stool tests and blood tests and urine tests and hair tests and skin tests and everything you can think of over the last seven years. I've worked with some of the top experts in the world, some of the top lipidologists. I've gotten ultrasounds. I've had my freaking arteries examined through ultrasound. I've done everything you can think of under the sun, all the biohacking, the infrared saunas, the cold therapy, the Wim Hof breathing. I did rebirthing breath work here in Chiang Mai, right? I've done coffee enemas. I've done acupuncture, everything you can think of over the last seven years with deep research every single day, the entire length of that time, right? So these people come in, I've been Clovis for six months. I'm a superhero. They go back and start training like they used to. They're working out five days a week, six days a week. Then I get a message two weeks later. I don't know what happened. My clothes don't fit right. And I'm inflamed and my joints hurt. Oh, duh, duh. You know, take everything that I did for you that was the opposite of what you were doing that gave you the best health of your entire life and then say, fuck it and go back to all the stuff you did before you met me. It makes a lot of sense, right? I see it all the time, guys. It's a mindset thing. So anyway, the reason I'm ranting on this is genetics will always play a role. Some people will look like super athletes without doing any fitness whatsoever. Those people will also probably die before you, right? Now, maybe not. Some people smoke cigarettes and drink alcohol and live to be 100 right? We don't really know. You guys got to remember, scientists understand 3% of human DNA. The other 97%, the other 97%, this is why things like 23 and Me, it's kind of cool, but you really don't know shit. They're going to analyze, what, 3 million SNPs or whatever. Guess how many SNPs have clinical data behind them when it comes to your genome? 24. I repeat that into the microphone. 24 of these genetic SNPs have clinical data behind them. And 23andMe is like, we test 20, we test 3 million genome SNPs. Why? What are you doing? You know, we really don't know, you guys. So there's a lot of things that we can't answer. But yes, some people are going to eat fruit juice and sugar and these things and remain skinny. They're going to. They probably don't feel that awesome. I mean, I'm honest, you know, like, I mean, we can't just be obsessed with the scales. Why I say, I don't give a shit what you look like naked. I care if you outlive your parents. That's what I care about, right? It's really important, guys. And this is a lifelong thing. This is lifelong. I have a couple clients now who have finally started working with a functional medicine doctor, and they sit down and have that first two-hour conversation on their first meeting with a doctor that they've never had. They've never had a doctor's appointment go more than five minutes. They talk to this person for two minutes about their background. Were you, were you a natural birth? All these things, right? You go into everything. And then they're like, hey, we got to lay out a 12-month plan here. You need this, this, and this test. Let's fix your gut health. Let's fix your allergies. Let's fix your sleep. All these things, right? This is not a sprint, you guys. It's a marathon, finite versus infinite games. It's not about what you look like naked. It's just not. All right, I'm talking a lot and there's a lot of comments coming in. So let's see. Um, Steve, hey, mate, you touched briefly on skin biome, on blood pressure, salt, and sex, and how you too used to have aggressive pit sweat. Yes, I used to use a, a uh, prescription grade uh, extra strength deodorant on stage and still had pit stains, right? on stage and only on stages where I suffer too. Is it anxiety? I was looking to get the mother dirt miss, but is there anything else I should look into besides non-toxic deodorant and soaps? One, uh, get my approved products list, which is on IamClovis.com. Um, let me try to grab you a link real quick. Um, yeah, so you want to remove all of the chemicals for sure. Like I use Dr. Bronner's soap. It's like literally an olive oil and coconut oil based soap. That's my body wash, it's my shampoo, it's my everything. I don't wear deodorant. I have one natural deodorant. Um, that I keep on hand, like when I when I flew on the plane, I knew I was going to be seated next to somebody for 14 hours uh, when I was flying to Chiang Mai. The Chiang Mai travel time was like, I think the the flight, the biggest flight there was 14 hours, and then there was a seven hour flight. And then you, when you know it's going to be a crazy travel day, I know I'm going to be sweating. I'm going to be sitting next to somebody and sweating. So I'll take this natural deodorant. Okay, cool. It'll make me smell a little nice, whatever you know. But I really don't wear that. And uh, it was actually I credit Mother Dirt completely. Um, for fixing my skin biome. Now, but the other issue is what a lot of people find when they switch to mother dirt is that it, sometimes it will make your body odor worse at first because your skin biome is, really needs to adjust. The same way you can shift your gut microbiome through diet in less than 48 hours. You can change your, your gut bacteria ratio, right? So keep that in mind, the mother dirt, you might be a little smelly at times using it. I find it helps to keep mother dirt in the fridge, um, but I used mother dirt exclusively for over a year. Um, and then just got to a point where I just wasn't getting pit stains ever. It was crazy, you know? So remove the toxins, consider a, a probiotic spray. There's, there's other probiotic sprays on Amazon. There's another one. Uh, I think it's in the approved products list. Crap. Let me get you that approved products list. 
right now and then you'll have a link to it just buy that look through it um, if you have any other questions there's probably this this thing is probably overdue for an update um, but once you buy the approved products list every, anybody who's bought an ebook from me knows this that when I update it anytime I update it in the future you bought the ebook for life anytime I update it in the future it pushes out you get an automatic download you can just download the newest version free of charge so buy that right now get the approved products list and um, remove the toxins maybe add some probiotics uh, add an actual ingestible probiotic too. I recommend Thrive. I'm really all about Thrive right now. I want to try to get the Thrive founder on the podcast as well. These spore forming probiotics. Um, no more lavender incense sticks for me. Yes, Cameron, I'm glad you said that. A lot of people burn lavender as incense. It's a big deal and you're just breathing in estrogen, right? I sent you a question, uh, but I don't mind asking here. Best way to get salt. Okay, yes. So I saw your question before I came on here. Um, and the, the, the three, six grams. So you're saying I've seen different recommendations. Details, right? Remember, the latest recommendation that I put up, this was actually inside of I Am Clovis responding directly to somebody's message who is a pregnant woman. Um, I talk about this in blood pressure, salt, and sex. Women who are breastfeeding and pregnant need more salt than and not less salt, right? I also shared a video from Rob Wolf today talking about how people who take in two grams of sodium or less per day are at a higher risk of death. Okay, this is proven. This is irrefutable science. Don't worry about what the American Heart Association says, those scumbags, right? Literally, you are at a higher risk of cardiac death, cardiac disease, risk, stroke, heart, whatever, and anything heart related if you take in less than two grams of sodium a day. I recommend three to six grams of sodium per day. And I want to be clear, that's not salt. Like a half teaspoon of Redmond sea salt, which is what I recommend, a half teaspoon of Redmond sea salt is around 600 milligrams, right? Uh, I mean, uh, no, 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 I'm sorry, that's a quarter teaspoon. A half teaspoon is right around a little over one gram of sodium. Okay, so don't weigh it by grams of salt total. You have to look at the nutrition facts and look at how much sodium is in the quarter teaspoon. It's right around, it's like 570 milligrams or 600 milligrams per quarter teaspoon. Now, the range is three to six grams. If you're a 200 pound CrossFitter man with six pack abs, I'm gonna tell you to take in six grams, you're an athlete, right? Now, that woman who was pregnant and dealing with some stomach issues, I recommended five grams to her. If you're a five foot tall woman who weighs 100 pounds, you probably only need three grams, right? But you need to, sodium, you need to supplement sodium. And the best way is Redmond sea salt. Now, Rob Wolf did just come out with a product called L called LMNT, which is an electrolyte supplement, which I'm super excited about because all electrolyte supplements suck. They're loaded with sugar. You ever see those like uh, they call them like liquid IV? Like you see liquid IV in the grocery store that's like 11 grams of sugar and like 100 milligrams of sodium. It's like literally less than one tenth of one teaspoon worth of Redmond. It's bullshit, right? So I just shared a link for um, Redmond that you can just grab on Amazon. Um, what else we got here? So yeah, three to six grams is my recommendation, but it depends on the person. And the reason you saw five grams is because I was talking to a pregnant woman. Is Dr. Bronner's hemp lavender okay? I would say no. I wouldn't get it with the lavender in it. We just talked forever about the estrogenic compounds of lavender. That's the thing. Essential oils have it. Uh, lotions have it. It's, it's supposed to be this healing compound, right? But I'm telling you, there are 10 different studies showing that chronic exposure to it is going to cause estrogen problems. So I don't use lavender. I just don't, you know, there's other Dr. Bronner products that don't have lavender in them. Get those for sure. You know, what else we got? Details matter. Yes, Kristen, details matter. I need to make a t-shirt about that. Um, so Ben Clovis five weeks and feel great and down 15 pounds. Boom. My normal face lotion I have been using for 15 years has been fine. The past two days turns my face red. Was switching after this done? Guessing throw, guess throwing it out. Sorry, sometimes I read your comments directly and I shouldn't because grammar, right? Um, yeah, throw it out. And recommendations, get my approved products list. I just shared the approved products list. Um, I think there's lotions in there. If there's not, message me and I'll send you lotion. Dr. Bronner's makes lotions, which are fantastic, right? I'm telling you guys, I cannot tell you how horrible these personal care products are. Do you know how your grandma or great grandma used to make soap? Animal fat. Make their own soap from animal fat. So this is another one of those things. I, I say this to people all the time. We just think that things have been around forever. Like, of course, cavemen used conditioner to keep their hair soft. What are you talking about? You've been sold, you've been marketed to, and you're wasting all of your hard-earned money, okay? All the beauty queens out there, you're wasting your hard-earned money, right? Look at my skin. I don't use any products. I don't even wear deodorant, right? Okay, I'm not gonna talk about looks or if the person's handsome or not handsome. I'm doing all right, right? I don't use shit. It's just like, why? It, it's not, it, you've been sold. And the money that women spend on this stuff, it blows my mind, right? 
If I hear one more person talk about the price of Clovis and then they're buying $70 shampoo and $80 conditioner and getting their nails done for 60 bucks a pop, come on, priorities people, right? What else we got? What's up, tribe? What's up, Steve? How you doing? So yeah, anyway, long story short, if you have any lotion that's making your face red or whatever, get rid of it. Get rid of it. It's not worth it. Not worth it. Throw it away. What do we got? 530 milligrams. I said 570. I was so close. Damn. Day four and I already feel amazing. Megan, that's fantastic. You're only going to feel more amazing. I promise you. If you feel amazing on day four, that's really good. It means your sugar detox wasn't super hard. So you're probably not that metabolically broken, um, which means you're going to get a lot of uh, uh, really good benefits here. Jackie, I love Mother Dirt's lotion. Awesome. I didn't, I don't think I knew that Mother Dirt had a lotion. Maybe it's in the, I, the approved products list was so long ago. Again, I told you guys this too. If you're an I am Clovis and you have products that you like, send them to me because one, I can try to work out a deal for my I am Clovis members where you get a discount on that product. Two, I can add it to the approved foods, um, to the approved products list and then push it out with these ebook updates. I can update those ebooks in a day and push them out with new products, right? My great grandma and grandma in the Philippines uses coconut oil for everything. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Coconut oil is wonderful, right? Now be careful here because what a lot of people will do is they'll grab like refined coconut oil and start using that, right? Like get like organic unrefined. Be careful about that. How you source coconut oil. Check out with simplicity. Her stuff is amazing. I use her skincare and her makeup. Awesome. Uh, send me a link to that. That'd be really cool. Um, I'll tr or maybe I'll just screenshot this or I'll just type it in right now with simplicity. Skincare. Let's see. Found it. With simplicity, LLC.com. Okay, cool. I'm going to bookmark this and take a look and see if I like the ingredients. I'm quite picky, um, but if I do like it, then we'll throw it in the approved foods list and you guys will have more options. Not the approved foods list, the approved products list. Uh, what else we got? Jackie Smith, thank you. Okay, cool. Um, any other questions here? So we touched on lavender. We touched on a lot of stuff, really. I've been ranting. We touched on whether skinny people are automatically healthy or not. Um, yes, some people can eat what they want and stay skinny. Just one of those things. I don't know. Um, I'm not one of those people. I know that I can go off the rails really quickly. And I've done a lot of uh, biohacking and stuff where I remember one time, so I've done three of these mass gains protocols. One time I put on 12 pounds of muscle in a month. Uh, one time I put on nine pounds of lean mass muscle in 30 days and lost three pounds of body fat simultaneously. And I tested this with these body composition readings. Um, and then there was one where I said, I'm going to test out this kind of bodybuilding style thing. So I way uh, upped my carbohydrate intake and my fat intake as well, as well as protein, which is a massive caloric um, uh, surplus. So I did this massive caloric surplus and gained like six pounds of fat. Um, I think I gained, I think I gained like seven pounds of muscle and like six pounds of fat. So I gained like 13 pounds and was mortified. So I lost all of that body fat in the next eight days after that. I was like, oh, really? Body? I gave you a bunch of carbohydrates and you decided to gain six pounds of fat? Okay. So I shred the six pounds of fat over the next eight days and just got rid of it and got back to my baseline body fat. These are the things you can do when you fully understand biochemistry and fully understand science. I say this, these things to people and they're just like, what, what are you talking about? You gained 13 pounds and then lost six pounds of body fat in eight days. Yeah. I didn't like the body fat on me. So I used science and got rid of it. That's the way this works, right? When you fully understand things, you can do this. Uh, what else we got? They got the coconuts from their trees and made it. That's badass. That's really cool. What do you suggest if you produce too much estrogen? Asking for a friend. Okay, now let's. I got to be really clear here. Um, this is happening a lot lately, um, and I'm flattered. So what's happening is I'm getting tremendous results in people. We're getting crazy results with cholesterol improvements and insulin resistance improvements and all of these things, uh, massive weight loss, massive fat loss, people's clothes fitting differently, people feeling differently, arthritis improvements, all these things, right? Now, again, I'm not making these claims, these medical claims. I can't give you medical advice. I actually can't. Um, so it's not fair. Like I can't, if you, if you say you're producing too much estrogen, one, I, I don't know your blood work. Um, there's really no way for me to answer that, right? Because it might not be that you're producing too much estrogen. You might be underproducing something else. And this is the body adapting by producing more of something else, right? Or the same way where you go to one of these low T centers, Hey, come give us 40 bucks. We'll test your testosterone. If it's low, we'll give you 200 milligram injections every two days until your testosterone is 4,000, right? It's, it's just irresponsible. Um, so I really can't answer that. And again, I say this over and over and over and over and over. Um, you need a functional medicine doctor. And the more I research this 
and people love to tell me they want to talk about insurance. It's not covered by insurance. It's not covered by insurance. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. If you really break down what you're paying for insurance um, and the medications and all the doctor visits and the co-pays when you have the freaking sniffles and your immune system sucks and all this, like I almost never see my functional medicine doctor because I almost never get sick. Right? I maybe see my functional medicine doctor twice a year, um, and it probably cost me 250 bucks out of pocket to see him, but I'm not on any medications. I don't have any chronic diseases. I don't have literally zero prescription medications. Right, So when you really break it down, I probably spend less than you do. It just feels like you're spending less because you have insurance. right? So it's really, you can make this stuff work. You make it work with HSAs. My sister just bought um, Biome Super Greens and Thrive Probiotics on her HSA account. Like they're like biome is HSA approved specifically. Um, just thrive the probiotic. We're not exactly sure, but she seems to have gotten away with it, which is wonderful. Um, but like these biome super greens, you can buy that on your HSA account. There's a million ways to skin this cat. You guys, there's, there's a, I think there's a book out now called undoctored, which is about how people are really moving away from conventional medicine. Chris Kresser also has the unconventional medicine thing. But anyway, the reason why I say this is because figuring out why your body's producing too much estrogen. Now, one, it could be these estrogenics. It might not be that your body's producing too much estrogen. You might be taking in estrogen from external sources, like we talked about. Lavender, get the book Estrogeneration and read about all these different phytoestrogens. They come from plastics. They come from soy. They come from certain different kinds of plants. Marijuana, CBD is even an estrogenic, right? It's found in a lot of these things. So you got to be really, really careful with this stuff. You might not be producing too much estrogen. You might be getting too much estrogen externally, right? Exogenously. Um, what else we got? Should I email you for my sodium intake recommendation? No, it's three to six grams. Start there. Start with three grams and see how you feel. Um, if you are getting headaches or anything like that, like I like, Sodium is an instant headache cure, by the way. Migraines, headaches, whatever. I don't think I've ever had a person who gets a headache and I say, take half a half a teaspoon of Redmond sea salt and drink 16 ounces of water behind it. Take it like a shot and then down 16 ounces of clean water, get rid of your headache instantly. So three grams is probably the minimum. Now, again, this video that I shared from Rob Wolf, you're at zero risk, zero risk of doing anything negative to yourself with too much sodium. You're not. You'd have to get up well over eight grams a day of sodium to have any kind of problems, 8,000 milligrams of sodium, right? You really don't need to worry about it. So this is best for you to experiment. Start with three grams, see how you feel. That's one and a half teaspoons throughout the course of the day. Break it up into quarter teaspoon doses. I'm at the point now, I take three grams first thing in the morning when I wake up, right? Um, even here, I took Redmond sea salt with me to Chiang Mai and I wake up every morning and I have a 16 ounce bag of Redmond sea salt. I pour the Redmond sea salt into a cup and I get these big jugs of water that I buy and just and have it right in the morning, even here in Chiang Mai. That's one thing that I always travel with is Redmond sea salt. I travel with these electrolytes. I might try Rob's new product just because it'd be easy to travel with those sample packs. Um, but yeah, it's between three to six grams and really just uh, kind of figure it out for yourself, you know? Um, so I just shared that ifm.org slash find my doc. That link is to find a functional medicine doctor. Um, go watch the doctor recommended episode. If you don't believe me how heinous the mainstream medical community is, go watch the doctor recommended episode. Can you get us discounts for new clothes? Um, maybe depending, like if it were some kind of a uh, fitness apparel or something like that, I am looking into that right now, actually. Um, so I'm looking into a particular fitness line, but I'm not going to tell you guys about that stuff until I can actually lock them down. Um, I'm going to go see Annika's. Yeah, uh, Sam, Annika's functional medicine doctor. Um, so anyway, Annika, one of the members saw a functional medicine doctor because she was having some issues and I said, go see a functional medicine doctor. And she did. She's not been disappointed. She was blown away. She's never had a doctor's appointment like that ever. And um, she sent me this woman's recommendations. She might be one of the most qualified functional medicine doctors I've ever seen. It's just a fantastic plan that she put together. And by the way, she loves Clovis. Okay, functional medicine doctors love Clovis. I've never met a functional medicine doctor, in fact, who has not loved the Clovis protocol. Liz, some functional medicine doctors are covered. I've found two within 20 miles of me, just research. It's fantastic, awesome. Um, anything you want to buy is approved till you get audited. I use mine for all kinds of health things that aren't prescribed. Let them try to tell me it's not a health product if someone questions me. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so she's talking about an HSA, health savings account. Use it for all sorts of stuff, right? Um, don't take all three grams at once. Yes. If, don't take all three grams of sodium in the beginning. Um, you will get diarrhea straight up, right? I take three grams all at once. I have no problem with it, but I've been supplementing sodium. I probably get at least five grams of sodium a day and I've done that for years. Um, but no, I didn't do three grams all at once. I used to do quarter teaspoons, right? 
Uh, I couldn't if I tried. I'm not Wolverine. <laughs> We're not all Wolverine. Only one of us. And I'm starting to look like Wolverine. Crazy. And I know it's you because my hairdresser back home in Nashville, she sees these videos and she's like, oh my God, you can't leave the house like that. You need to come home and get a haircut. No, I'm out here adventuring. Okay. What else we got? Um, I heard in one of your AMAs about how you took a course for speed reading. What company did you use to improve your reading? Easy. Uh, quick learning dot com and i highly recommend it um this this has actually been quite popular here in chiang mai um when i talk to these uh, i go to these millennial men meetups and these digital nomad meetups and all these things and these people are blown away by the fact that uh i seem to have a book recommendation for anything that they talk about that's because for the last probably five years i've read four books at a time um so i always read four books at a time. There's a book that I like to read with my morning coffee. There's a book that I like to read in the afternoon. There's particular genres of books that I like to read at night before bed. I read four books at a time. Um, so I go through hundreds of books and that's all because of speed reading. I was a terrible reader. Um, and I want to explain this to you guys that uh, people seem to think that if you speed read, you're going to have less comprehension. Nothing could be further from the truth. This particular quick learning course is all about improving comprehension through speed because the average person's speeding, uh, reading speed would be like if I talked to you like this and taught you about nutrition. You would not retain any of that information because it's annoying. That's not how human, human beings talk, right? Like I listen to Audible on 1.5 speed because it's painfully slow when people talk normal and I talk really fast. So I actually comprehend the faster I go, the better. Um, anyway, that's what quick learning is all about. You don't realize that when you're sitting there reading every word like this and then you re read a whole page you can't remember shit it's because you're reading like a dummy because school doesn't teach you how to read properly <laughs> it's ridiculous what else we got um i tried buying the i am clovis shirt but it's sold out getting more anytime soon um which one are you referring to uh there's there should be i am clovis shirts for sale um i am clovis should definitely be for sale because i know better shirts i think are sold out most of my eat whole foods change the world shirts are sold out i need to order more of those i might do a pre-order um, just because that's going to be a lot easier. So I don't have to hold inventory. So if you guys are interested in shirts, um, maybe I'll do a pre-order and then order them and then and then just ship them out to you as they're printed. Might be cool. Uh, good. We all need new clothes. I could fit in everything. I now fit in in a single suitcase. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's everybody needs new clothes after Clovis. It's ridiculous. It's one of the uh, downsides, I guess. The I Am Clovis tank top is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's awesome too. Um, for those of you that have these tank tops and shit, how come you're not posting on social media in your I Am Clovis clothes? Let's just talk about that for a second right? If you have my I am Clovis gear, any kind of my merch or anything, post in that, put it on your social media, put it on your Instagram, tag Clovis, put it on your Facebook, all these things, right? Wear it. That's the point guys. I make merchandise because it's advertising. Get out there, wear it, take pictures of it. I rock my eat whole foods, change the world shirt in Chiang Mai all the time. And I'm pissed because I brought my three quarter sleeve and somehow left my V-neck t-shirt, eat whole foods, change the world back in Nashville. What the hell? I've been furious. I don't have that thing out here. But anyway, so went to an outing, someone asked what Clovis was. What would be a quick and accurate reply? That is almost impossible. Um, one of the hardest things to, uh, I mean, literally just say eat whole, I eat whole foods. That's it, I eat whole foods. I guess that's it, right? Um, but you need to watch what makes Clovis different and why you need it. You need to watch uh, Clovis is not keto. All these things are very important, right? So go to clovis.show here. I'm gonna, uh, I'll reply to you ah. and just go to clovis.show and search for um search the word different literally go to the search bar and search the word different that's going to pop up and say what makes clovis different and why you need it you need to watch that episode it's very very important um what else we got gotta go have a great night all right dude later steve yeah that tip helped me with audible so much the 1.5 speed yeah it's a big deal right I want a pink baseball one, but you only have leaves. What? Proofread. <laughs> Just teasing you. Uh, what else we got? Oh, larges. Okay, I see what you're saying now. You only have larges. Uh, bummer. Yeah. Uh, let me take a look. I don't know. If you guys have requests, like, let me know about this stuff. Obviously, right now on the Facebook Live, it's actually very difficult for me to take notes on some of this stuff. So, like, if you want a particular shirt or something, email me. You guys can always email me at any time. You know that all of my stuff on the website, if it says contact me, it goes directly to me, right? If you want a particular shirt, tell me about it, right? Details matter shirt for sure. Yeah, I think I want to make a details matter shirt. You're right. My bad. Will do. My IG profile pick is an I know better shirt. Oh, Sean, you're great at sharing. Yeah, not everybody else, but you are. 
Thank you, Rockstar. Uh, Naomi, took your advice and that quick learning was life changing. Yes, amazing, right? And it's like six hours of video, right? Uh, quick learning, thanks for intelligent and useful advice. Need to buy a tank. Yes, need to buy a tank. That tank is awesome. You will rock the shit out of that tank. So please post pictures in it. That will be awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, and quick learning is amazing. It's really just straightforward. It's super simple on the way that he explains it and details his thing. The guy is brilliant. I mean, he works with Will Smith. He works with Barack Obama. He works with some of the top performers in the world. He's basically a superhero. Um, guy's incredible, right? What else we got? Anti-inflammatory. Yes, what's that in response to? What are chatting about? Oh, uh, in terms of describing Clovis? Yeah, that's probably a good way. Uh, massively anti-inflammatory. That's one of the biggest benefits of it because inflammation is at the root of all chronic disease. All chronic disease. Lowering inflammation is one of the single best things you can do in your body. Um, okay, I was doing it from my phone versus a computer. Ordering a shirt now. Yes, do it. Um, yeah, Carly, email me again about your shirt. Um, I think you ordered it because I know better and we were out of stock or something. I would, you, remind, remind me, remind me, remind I tell you guys this all the time. There's way too many of you. I'm having trouble keeping track of things. This is why I switched to a membership platform. I switched to a membership platform so I can actually answer all of your questions because when I have hundreds of people contacting me that have never interacted with the Clovis store whatsoever, that's not sustainable. Sorry, I'm putting a lot of value into the world, right? So if you guys are buying from me, then I want to hear from you. If you're buying from me and you're supporting Clovis and you're supporting the mission, yes, absolutely. So Carla, send me an email, send me the details again, we'll figure it out. If not, I'll just send you a full refund, we'll get new t-shirts and you can buy a new one. Not a big deal, right? Don't worry. Um, what else we got? What time is it? Okay, we got three minutes left if we cap it at one hour, which we can do. Um, not too, too many questions today. So this is basically another free for all one. So I'll find what questions, like I'll probably put the word lavender in the title of this one. So people know that we talked about lavender. Um, I'll take the, the biggest takeaways from this episode, um, missed and in case you missed it last time. So the, in case you missed it, email blast did go out. Um, but and in case you missed it, Instagram video did not go out. Why? Because I spent the whole weekend in a place called Rayleigh beach crabby, which was beautiful. I did not know when I booked it that it was a completely isolated island. You have to take a boat to get there. Um, so anywhere I wanted to go was at least a 20 minute boat ride away and then get in a cab and then go like I went to this amazing Tiger Cave Temple this weekend and it took an hour to get there. Uh, it took an hour to get to the Krabby Airport to get back to Chiang Mai. Um, so I was just taking these long boats everywhere that was really crazy. And what's funny about Thailand is it's quite dangerous. <laughs> um, so this is my last day in Krabby. I've taken, I must have taken 10 of these, these long boats around right my mom's gonna hate this she's gonna hate hearing the story so then I get on this long boat to get back to the Krabby Airport to get back to Chiang Mai right so I'm on this boat and this guy gets on with two kids he's got a Thai wife and he's a, he's a, a white guy from the States right he's like yeah I've lived here for 16 years blah 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 and his kids have life jackets on and I'm like yeah the kids not a not a strong swimmer like what's the deal over here and he goes oh no they can swim just fine these long boats tip all the time and I was like what he said, yeah, one of these longboats flipped last week and 50 people died. And I said, uh, did you say 50 people died? He said, yeah, a boat, they put 50 people on a longboat is way too many. It flipped and most of them were Asian tourists who were not strong swimmers and they died. And you'll never hear about it. America will probably never hear about it. I was like, oh, okay. So now I'm white knuckling the entire way <laughs> on this longboat. Now, luckily I'm a strong swimmer, right? I mean, Technically, if we flipped over and I was there, I would just swim with my feet and I'd put my arms up and I would just throw the boat into the sky and then it would go up into the sky and then it would flip and it would land upright and then I would just single-handedly pluck everyone out of the water and save their lives. That's what probably would have happened if my longboat tipped. But I was still a little bit nervous because that sounds like a workout. I didn't feel like working out at the time. But anyway, a longboat flipped and 50 people died and I found out about it while I was on a longboat. That was cool. Yeah. But this guy had lived on this island for 16 years, and a long boat would never flip for him, but apparently they flip them all the time. Crazy story. All right, what else we got? People who don't, who don't have a membership need to see what they are missing. Yeah, so I'm probably going to put together a graphic of all the membership benefits and all of the discounts. I don't even know how many brands I have worked with now to get you guys incredible discounts. Like, I don't know, like those of you that don't know that are that are in Clovis, I now have a deal worked out with Onnit. So you can save on fitness equipment. I get you kettlebells, gymnastics rings, steel maces, medicine balls, all these things, right? Um, it's absurd, and I'm not stopping. Like, I literally reach out to companies every single day. I'm going to bring you so much value. It's insanity, absolute insanity. Um, so the people that don't want to be a member, that's cool. Go, go have fun. Don't need you. Sorry. What else we got? Um, anybody have any questions before we wrap this thing up? You want to hear more Thailand stories? What do you want to hear? I got lost in the jungle for five hours. Uh, found a little family in a hut. 
and bought gasoline from them in these tiny little glass bottles for like a dollar. That was scary. A uh, guy I was with fell on his dirt bike. I thought he broke his foot. That was scary. Um, a lot of scary stuff, right? The water park I went to was horrifically scary. I went to this water park and wakeboarded and zip lined and ran around and was jumping off cliff. I did a 40 foot cliff jump. All these men, I was like, this is so much fun. Huh? And then I went home and Googled it. A bunch of people died there too. <laughs> Some kid jumped off the 40 foot thing, landed on his friend's head, broke his neck. Another guy jumped off the 40 foot thing with his life jacket on strapped around him. You don't want to just make a 40 foot jump with a life jacket on dummy. So he does this jump. They let him, he jumps, boom, comes out of the water, coughing up blood, internal bleeding. They drag him out of the water, right? Now I didn't see any of this stuff. I just Google it after the fact. I'm like, thankfully I didn't Google this place before I went. Cause I would have had, I probably wouldn't have went, but I had a really fun day. It was pretty fun. Anyway, the regulations out here aren't like back home. Let me tell you, there's no safety inspectors or anything. It's crazy. Oh my gosh. Okay, so uh, anything else? Anything else you guys want to talk about? This is AMA number 58, uh, basically a straight up ask me anything, and I'll have obviously comprehensive show notes for you guys. Anytime I mention an AMA or anything like that, remember, you can go to Clovis.show. Um, and the thing is, so here's what I think is happening with people, is they go to the, the Clovis.show website and they'd like, guess. They'll be like, they'll just type in like random phrases, right? So you're better off like you're literally better off going to Clovis.show and typing words like type keto, type different, type sugar, type fat, type Rob and Rob Wolf will pop up. You know what I mean? Like those kinds of things. Just go there and literally, literally type in like one word things. You can type in like estrogen, type in hormones, right? But use the search function at Clovis.show because it's pretty robust and you can see um, all the different AMAs that I've done. Uh, there's also, let me see, I think I have a direct link. Yeah, like that link right there, um, if you click that link, it'll just take you to all of the AMAs. So you'll see all the AMAs. Blender bottle and tank top ordered. Boom, that's awesome. Guess what happened? Um, I was looking around my apartment here the other day and I lost my Clovis blender bottle. I lost my Clovis blender bottle somewhere in Thailand and I'm not happy about it. So I gotta ship one to my house back home, but obviously that doesn't help me here. I can't ship the thing to Thailand. I don't have international shipping yet. There's something in the works, everybody. Uh, I've been talking to a particular retailer about international shipping. So anyway, uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on behind the scenes all the time, all the time, all the time. I'm on six different prescriptions for my IVF embryo transfer soon, including prednisone. Should I not fast while on meds trying to reduce inflammation? Again, that's tricky. You're asking me for medical advice. I'm not a huge fan of IVF and their success rate. I think there are way better ways um, to do it. IVF is absurdly expensive and not guaranteed. Um, I would recommend you search Google Chris Cresser Fertility and just see what comes up there. Um, now, I believe he has a paid course, but trust me, it's worth it. Um, he's notoriously known for taking people who've been trying to have kids for years and he all of a sudden he does lifestyle intervention and these couples are pregnant inside of three months of working with Chris. It's really unbelievable. Um, yeah. So anyway, I can't really give you medical advice on what to stay on or stay off of fast. Anytime you're going to fast with any kind of prescription medication, you have to talk to your doctor. Um, now I have to say that, right? Anytime you're going to fast with medication, you must talk to your doctor. I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. It's not to be taken as medical advice, but I assure you, if you have a conventional doctor, he's going to say, no, fasting is dangerous. That's what he's going to tell you. Guaranteed. So that's a tricky question. One that I can't really answer for you. Sorry. Um, just started number one and listening to them all. I'm on number 26. Yeah, that's a great, great, great idea. You're going to get a masterclass in nutrition. You, if you're on number 26, you already know more about nutrition. Again, the average conventional medicine doctor gets less than 20 hours of training on nutrition through all of med school. So literally, just in my AMAs alone, I have put out more than three times the content on nutrition than doctors learn through all of medical school. Literally, from some random musician in Nashville, you're going to learn more about nutrition from my podcast than doctors, medical doctors learn about nutrition and biochemistry in med school. That's insane, right? Absolutely insane. What else we got? I'm old 45, yes, over 30,000 already. I don't know what that means, over 30,000. Just plain old eating Clovis massively helps with inflammation. Yes, 100%. The approved foods list is your best friend. The approved foods list is your best friend. There's nothing inflammatory in the approved foods list. 
I've listened to Lectins and Leaky Gut twice. Lectins and Leaky Gut is a fantastic episode. Go listen to that. Uh, Back to Basics Fat Loss. Listen to Basics of Human Metabolism. Uh, go to Clovis.show and search Metabolism. Watch that episode. Listen to that episode. You need to know how your body works on a fundamental level, okay? And you need to know all the things that I'm trying to untangle when you come to me super unhealthy. Again, I don't like this new trend of people being Clovis for six months and deciding that they're a superhero and going out and lifting all the weights they used to lift and sleeping four hours because they need less sleep because they have all this energy and blah, blah, blah. You're going to undo all the hard work that we've done, okay? This is a lifelong journey. You need to take these principles and you need to actually practice them. I don't care if you want to be an Instagram fitness influencer, right? That's You need to get your health right and you need to do that sustainably and for the long term. We can talk about fitness goals and things after the fact, but down the line, right? Down the line. Like guys, I'm not in the gym six days a week lifting weights like a bodybuilder. I simply don't do it, right? Not at all. All right, what else we got? My doctor agrees with you. First one ever. That's fantastic. You get a smart doctor. Oh, over 30K on IVF. Yeah, okay. Wow. $30,000. That's... <sighs> I don't want to discourage you here, but you need to Google Chris Kresser Fertility, and I think his program is $297. Like, do it. Now, spoiler alert, it's Clovis. Not kidding. It's Clovis. He's probably going to recommend things like whole whole fat dairy products. Details matter, details matter, details matter, details matter, details matter. Before I say this, he might recommend things like raw milk from grass-fed cows, not going and getting milk from the grocery store, which is a terrible idea because it's one of the most inflammatory foods in America, right? It's a totally different ballgame if you go to a farmer. It's actually illegal in a lot of states to get raw milk from cows, but it's one of the most nutrient-dense foods on planet Earth. Um, really, really important for particular things. So you need to up your fatty intake. You need to up your red meat intake. Oh my God, red meat. You absolutely need to up, 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 increase the intake of these things. Uh, just Google Chris Kresser and fertility. Do yourself a huge favor. I mean, really, people put themselves in debt for this kind of stuff, you know, and it's simply the medical community failing you. I have way more faith in nutrition changes than I do in IVF therapy. Why? Because I have a lot of friends who have three, four, one has two, uh, different IVF attempts that have failed completely. And they're in debt. They're in significant debt because of it. And they're like, sorry. Wow, doc, go fuck yourself. That's insane, right? I, I don't know. I don't know where people's minds are at, right? You got to... Anyway, sorry. I'm not trying to be discouraged. I hate that I just did that too. I'm really, really sorry. I don't want to sit here and put this down. I don't want to be that guy. Um, but I just want things to work for you. I really do. Like that's an amazing thing that you're trying to do and I want it to work for you. It, I'm going to get, I'm literally going to get emotional if I talk about this. It bothers the shit out of me that people do so many things that don't work and they lose their money, money that they worked really hard for. I can't, yeah, now I'm upset. I can't wrap my head around these things, guys. I really can't. You have to understand why I do this work, okay? Understand why I'm here. I don't need your money. I don't, right? You need your money. Keep it. Stop spending it on shit that doesn't work. I hope this works. I really, really hope it works for you. Anyway, I'm sorry I went down this rabbit hole, but yeah, you got to learn big time. These things, it, it sucks. People, people learn from doing, right? They learn what doesn't work, unfortunately. Everybody that gets to me gets to me because everything else that they've tried has not worked. And that's just soul crushing to me. It's really, really difficult. This job is hard sometimes because I tend to take on what other people have been through. Um, but it's cool. I love it. I love every second of it. I really, really do. I'm happier than I've ever been. I'm more fulfilled than I've ever been. I am more driven. This being here in Thailand and missing the crap out of my family and the weird time change, me doing these in the morning with you, right? I appreciate so much. Um, I, I've never been this, I've never been this driven in my life. Um, so mark my words, just watch. Watch 2019 right? Because we're going to wake people up. We're going to wake a lot of people up. Watch what I do. So we'll probably end on that note because yeah, I'm on fire right now and I'm going to, I'm literally going to change a lot about the way people view nutrition and I'm going to change it in a big way. Watch, right? And my results speak for themselves, everybody. I'm sure there are some people probably watching this right now that aren't convinced, right? Go look at my results. Go look at my clients. Look at what people say. That's it. That's it, right? I don't care what you think. I don't care what you read. I don't care what somebody else told you. What are their results, Results, right? Stop listening to the pre-diabetic who's 80 pounds overweight telling you that all that fat's going to kill you, right? Look at me. Look at them. Sorry to be a dick about it, but really, guys. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to start ranting. I'm in rant, full-blown rant mode because of uh, IVF now. FYI, I'm 24 hours into fasting and drank some salt water earlier. Boom. That's awesome, dude. I did a 29-hour fast um, this week. 
and it was great. I just really felt like I needed it. Uh, there's a lot of crap food out here, obviously. So I've been I've been really trying to take advantage. Blah, 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 blah. I've been really trying to take advantage of like long intermittent fasts and trying to get at least 16 hours a day. Trying to do intermittent fasting at least 16 hours a day, eating much less. But I'm also withering away to nothing. So um, Lance, whenever I get my butt home, I expect you to cook me a fully paleo meal. I expect there to be tequila. I expect there to be dry farm wines. I expect there to be macadamia nuts covered in dark chocolate. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but Lance feeds me macadamia nuts covered in dark chocolate. Yep. <laughs> He's like, dude, what are you doing right now? Stop talking about this. This is going on your podcast. Yeah, it is. Welcome to Clovis. I just be me, guys. But no, for real, I can't wait. Um, when I come home, we'll have a big feast, and I need to put meat back on my bones, and I need to gain all of the muscle. Um, I'm going to work hard on it. It's going to be awesome. Hoping for a full 72 hockey game tomorrow night. Might might mess that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 72, 72 is long, dude. That's a significant fast um, for sure. What else we got? Steve? Kristen. Oh, Kristen's talking to Lance. Did you start after your celebration shot last night? <laughs> Hell yes. We're going to do a big meal. It'll be awesome. Um, anyway, anybody got anything else? It's been over an hour now, so we can shut this thing down. And um, I'm going to get on with the day, right? I know you guys are probably going to bed and stuff. So fantastic. I'm going to drink some more coffee. I'm going to put paleo powder in it. It's going to be wonderful. Can't wait. Um, so anyway, thank you guys for being here. This is AMA number 58, all the newbies. I'm so glad that you're here. So glad you're asking questions. Thank you. Remember, uh, ama.iamclovis.com, A-M-A dot, so no HTTPS, none of that stuff, just A-M-A dot iamclovis.com. Ask me a question, submit it. It'll go to my email, and I can answer it on next week's AMA. Um, anytime you have a question, just let me know. It'll be awesome. And um, that's it. Thank you guys so much for being here. Sorry that I ranted a little bit and got a little bit emotional about the IVF stuff, but it really bugs me. Um, check out Chris Kresser's work on fertility. Please, please, please. Kelly Brogan works with uh, fertility as well. She's fantastic. Dr. Kelly Brogan, check out A Mind of Your Own. Learn all about the dangers of birth control and hormonal imbalance. Pick up Estrogeneration by Dr. Anthony J. I'll try to get all these people on the podcast for you so I can have deep, deep conversations with them for you to listen to when I'm in a position where I can schedule this stuff and have a stronger internet connection and all that stuff, I promise. And it'll happen at some point. I'll probably return to the States. We'll see. Um, anyway, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I love you. Thank you for being here. AMA number 58. Um, I appreciate you guys. This will come out as a podcast tomorrow. Um, as they always do, I will try to do the, in case you missed it, because I am back in Chiang Mai where I do have internet. So I can probably do the, in case you missed it on Instagram. Won't miss that this week. Um, anyway, that's it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Kristen. Everybody. You guys are awesome. I love you all. Justin Nault signing off. Ask me anything. Number 58. Until next time. Bye.